Hey everybody, it's Peter for Brainford Kia and this is my personal EV. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a service. We're gonna explain two of the main services that we do on an EV and my car mileage wise is right in between. Now the difference with my car is it's a year old. Uh, I do winter tire swaps and you've heard me on my videos before. I always say if you're gonna buy an EV, buy winter tires. If you're in Canada, you're gonna get cool weather, you're gonna get snow. And the Eco tires are pretty good for economy. They're very good for economy. They're not so great in wet weather or especially in snow. So I do encourage you to get winter tires. Now, when you get winter tires, leave them at the dealer. A dealer like ours will store them for you. And what you can do is then you can come in twice a year. For mechanics, that's gonna make it easier. We're gonna introduce to you Chris in a second here. And he's gonna go through all the different services that we do on an EV. And if you have questions, let us know in the comments below and we'll get back to you. And if you like this video, we'll do more videos just like this. So let's get into the service and I'll introduce you to Chris. All right, because it's coronavirus, you are gonna see Chris and I separately. We're gonna keep our distance from each other, but Chris is gonna be working on the car, and throughout this video, I'm gonna narrate some of what's going on, and the other times, we're gonna ask Chris to demonstrate. So Chris is, first of all, a master technician from Kia. He is factory trained in all of our vehicles. He is especially, what's especially important for an EV is he is EV and hybrid certified. Now, that really matters if you don't have a technician uh, EV or hybrid certified, uh, they shouldn't be really touching your car. So it's important to go to Kia dealer and specifically to get the technicians that are certified on these cars. Chris is that. So we're gonna let him take uh, over the service right now and we'll go from there. So most of the first service, it's a $69.95 service. Now keep in mind if you're thinking, hey, that's an oil change price, the first service on, on an EV is at 12,000 kilometers, even though we're in the severe climate. In Canada, we usually recommend every 6,000 kilometers for a gas car, I'm at 12,000 kilometers. Now this actual car is, like I said, it's between that. We're about 16,500 kilometers. So one of the things we're gonna decide is, do we need to do just the first service, the service A, or a service B? The service B is gonna include a brake service. And I'm thinking my car will probably need that. It's been about a year and uh, it's already been through one winter. It's about to go through its second winter. So most of what we're doing is inspections. Now we've already checked the lights on this car. That's the first thing they do. We're gonna check the cabin filter. We'll show you some of that. And then we're gonna get into taking the wheels off and looking at the brakes and going through a number of inspections. So we'll talk about some of those inspections. Things like brake fluid, brake lines and hoses, connections, a lot of those things. Air filter, like we talked about with the cabin air filter. Uh, there's also a number of linkages and other pieces in the suspension and steering components that Chris is gonna walk us through. So that's what we're doing in this essentially first service at 12,000 kilometers. So one of the first inspections we do is the cabin air filter. Now that's behind the glove compartment. Chris just pulled one out. This in front of him is the one that's been there for just over a year. Chris, tell, tell me what you think about it. This is average dirt uh, that uh, would be filtered from the cabin air filter. Um, normally I'd recommend this. If you look here, Peter, we got a, it's night and day difference. Yeah, so the new one's still in the plastic there. You can see how clear that one is. And mine's been there a year. A year's about the right time to replace That's it. Correct. So on my car, I am gonna replace the cabin filter after, like I said, about a year and 16,500 kilometers. Now, when we're looking under the hood, there's a few fluids that we're gonna check. So there's three in particular, and there's also a battery we're gonna test. So Chris, tell us about the fluids that we're gonna look at. Simply the washer fluid. Uh, we have the brake fluid. Washer fluid there, brake fluid over here. Now tell us what we do for the brake fluid. You have a tester there? Yeah, we do. So we just make, tester goes in. We just make sure that uh, there's a specification for how much water and moisture is held in the, uh, in the brake fluid. Right, and that's past that test. We did that actually off camera, so we know we're good there. And we also have a little litmus test here for the coolant. Right. There's so, still coolant on EVs, and uh, Chris is going to dip that in there. He's going to take a look at that, make sure it passes the test. And we are good. And everything tests out perfectly there as well. All right, there's also a battery. Now tell me, a lot of people get confused when they see on the, uh, on the website when they book their appointment or when they talk to somebody, there's inspect battery condition. Now which battery are we talking about? This is the low voltage battery, which does all your control systems. Sounds like a 12 volt battery in a regular gasoline car as well, right? Absolutely. There we go. So Chris is gonna test that and make sure that's all right as well. And uh, then we'll show you what else we're gonna do today. One of the things Chris did for us is he took off the plastic shroud that we sort of never touch. And you can see a couple things here. First of all, I'm always impressed with how low the center of gravity is. You can see where the actual uh, areas are. It's significantly lower than a gasoline vehicle. A lot of people are surprised to see that there's still some hoses in here. Those hoses still need inspection. So Chris has taken a look at all of the hoses in my car here. Uh, they have passed his test, but I just thought I'd show you what it looks like with that shroud off. And you can see there's still some dust buildup, normal type stuff under here, but all of these hoses that uh, he needs to look at, he has inspected and they have passed the test. 
One of the next things we do is we lift the car in the air. Now, of course, I'm also here to get my tires uh, swapped onto snow tires. Now, as part of that $69.95 package that we have here at Brantford Kia, uh, we can rotate those tires as part of the package. Now, we rotate tires anyways. That's very important because you have a lot of torque here in the front wheels. Uh, and you want to move them to the rear wheels anyways. Now, of course, if you're doing winter tire swaps, you don't really have to worry about rotating the tires as you'll be swapping them twice a year anyways. I'm going to walk underneath the car here. You can see a lot of that aerodynamic design is underneath here as well. You've got a plastic shrouding in the front. This panel that you see in the center of your screen right now is the shield over the battery. So that is a big uh, shielded area. We're just going to come around to the back as we turn around here, take a look at the back of the car as well. You can see the rear suspension, and again, more plastic shielding, a diffuser type style that you don't really see, but it does still help with the airflow. And again, this battery here, that's about it. That's uh, where you see the battery all up in there. Um, and this aluminum shield is what keeps it protected. Now, Chris is gonna take a look at suspension pieces, steering components, and he's gonna talk to us about what he's doing there as part of the inspections. So before we take the wheels off, tell me what you're doing here, Chris. We're just gonna have an inspection to make sure that the ball joints and tie rods uh, are, don't exhibit any excessive play. So, of course, we're going to make sure that if there's any play here, any axial play, then we'll make sure. And in this case, everything's pretty tight. Being. So everything's good. So one of the things we always mention is people forget that when they do an oil change on a gasoline car, there's a number of inspections. And people, I mean, uh, our own vehicles have seen this. We've seen Sorrentos where a, a run of them had some ball joints that we had to replace early on. So it is still important to have your car looked at for all of these inspections, especially these steering and suspension components. So as expected, we're not seeing anything out of the ordinary here, but that's one of the important things to do is get the car in the air and have a technician take a look at it. He knows what's normal and what's not normal, and he can tell very quickly. We also look at the rims and the tire speed to see if there's any damage from uh, any collisions or road hazards. Yep, so rims and tires looked at. We'll find out if my wife or I have driven over anything that we shouldn't have. A lot of times tires can have bulges, uh, we see that oftentimes people go over a curb or a driveway bump a little too quick or a pothole. So Chris is looking for those kind of things. If the tires are unsafe in any way, he's going to let us know before we have a problem. And keep in mind with your EV, you don't have a spare tire. You have an inflator kit, but keeping an eye on your tire pressures with those tire pressure monitors and having someone inspect them regularly is a good idea. We're also going to check tread depth a little bit later before we take the tires off and uh, we'll compare that. And if you come to Brantford Kia, you're going to have a measurement uh, that you can keep in mind. So if, for instance, if, you're, uh, if these tires were done uh, before next spring, I would be able to look for the best sales over the winter, work with my dealer, and find good prices on tires for when I need to put these summer tires back on in the spring. So now we've taken the wheel off. You can see it sitting down here. And one of the things we do, like we said, uh, today I'm switching to winter tires, but even if just rotating the tires, this is what they're going to see. Now, one of the cool things about EVs, I'm going to try to see it. You can see those sort of diagonal lines going this way on my brake rotor. Those are the kinds of things that you would not see on a gasoline car on the brake rotors at, say, the first oil change. And this car has 16,000 kilometers. I call that cross-hatching on the brakes. I'm not sure if that's the right term for it, but you've heard me talk about it in the past where I say there's still cross-hatching on the brakes. And after 16,000 kilometers, the front brakes still have that. And that's because the front wheel brakes, which is what you see right here, actually aren't used that much on an EV. You have regenerative braking, which is the electric motor being used to brake the car on the front. Now, the rear brakes look a little bit different. As we come back here, you see a little bit more rust in there, a little bit more wear in there. Now, that's for a few reasons. The regenerative braking does not work on the rear wheels. So to balance the braking out front wheels and rear wheels, sometimes your rear wheel brakes, which is what you see in the picture here, are activated and your front wheel brakes are not because it is doing just regenerative braking. Now, that regenerative braking takes the pressure off of the car's braking abilities, but you can see some rust here. So Chris, tell me what you're seeing on these after 16,000 kilometers and one full year. Well, like you said, Peter, there's uh, no cross hatching or what we call a non-directional finish. Uh, there's a small rust ridge starting to create um, uh, on the edge here and here. And if you notice, there's a little bit of rust that's uh, starting at the co point of contact on the brake caliper carrier. So those points would have to be lubricated in service. So one of the things we talk about with EVs, the most important thing is you want to do your brake services. And this is what we're talking about. So basically what these do is they grab and release and they grab with thousands of pounds of pressure, but they don't release with that much pressure. And you can go, you know, without my Kia badge on, I can say you can go many, many, many kilometers. I can't list a number, uh, but it's certainly much more than a gasoline car in theory on an electric car. Now, if you don't get them serviced, you will find that you have premature brake wear. And premature brake wear is a waste of money on an EV. 
So in this service, I came in at that $69 service, $69.95, but Chris is recommending a break service and I agree with him. I'm gonna do that. And so the way it works is Chris recommends to the service advisor, the service advisor would come talk to me, the customer and say, this is what our technician recommends and this is why. And then you would have a decision to make. Now I'm telling you, if you're an EV owner, this is the kind of thing you're gonna to wanna to do every 24,000 kilometers or every year. Now my car's only at 16.5 or so, 16,500 kilometers, but it's definitely time to do that. And especially the first brake service is important because there's not as much lube from the factory as Chris is gonna put on there. So we're gonna see some of that in a second here, but that is something I'm gonna do. And that moves us from the $69 service to the $311 service. What does that include? Basically, I'm doing that cabin air filter, which is part of that $311 service, and I'm doing the brake service in addition to all the inspections. So I'm doing the one-year service, which we recommend uh, because of the one year and because of exactly what you're seeing right here. A couple of the other things Chris is gonna check while he's in here is you can see there's a whole bunch of components in here. These are the brake lines over here. We have to make sure that they're all still where they're supposed to be. Those things can get dislodged by driving over something on the highway. You may not even notice that or forget about it, but Chris is gonna be able to see the drive boots, the drive line there. He's gonna look at everything and make sure it's where it's supposed to be, that it's in the condition it's supposed to be, whether it's a steering linkage. You can see there's rubber boots in there. There's the other one over on the drive shaft here. If any of those have any defects or if they're out of place, Chris is gonna know that and he's gonna let the customer know or let me know in this case, just to make sure that I'm safe when I'm driving and I don't have any premature wear or any situations where I'm gonna have something go wrong that I don't wanna have go wrong. He'll be able to uh, prevent things for me just by taking a look and making sure everything's the way it's supposed to be. All right, so now Chris has done the brake service on the rear wheel here. So Chris, tell me what I see. Now, first thing I'm gonna notice is I see a lot of lubrication in there. Tell me about that. Correct. Uh, if you see, this point is already cleaned up and well lubricated so that the pads can freely move as they are, as well so, as the pins Just here. so we're clear, because I'm a layman here, these pads are moving in and out through there, right? So that's a pivot, that's a sliding point kind of that's, thing? That's exactly it. Perfect, okay. So if they have to be able to slide freely, as well as the pins for the, the carrier uh, out of the caliper. We also get rid of any of the rust ridge and clean the hub face. Right, so on here, there was a lot more of a ridge before. It may be hard to see on camera, but you can see in person the, the real difference there. Now, tell, tell me what happens if someone doesn't do the maintenance. I know you've got some uh, examples here. These aren't necessarily from an EV, uh, but Chris is gonna look at measurements first. So what he's doing is he's got a brake measurement tool. Yeah, so Peter, you have eight millimeter on your brakes, which is in great condition. They start around 10 to 12. Um, what we have here um, is some worn brakes. So two mil, if you, as you see here, that's worn just at or below safety specs. So just so I'm looking at it clear, because it's sometimes harder to see on camera, right here in this area is the area that is just the holder or what it- We call that the, the, the brake pad backing. Brake pad backing, and then you can see the pad material above that. Sometimes that's hard to see on camera, so I just want to show you what you're seeing there. That's correct. And this one here, it actually has quite a bit of material, but if you see that gap there, Peter, Yep. That crack there, it's actually separating from due to heat and lack of maintenance. Right, so heat is the one big thing. We'll talk about that in one second, but show me the last pad. And so this one here, we were talking about that rust ridge on the rotors. It's created some irregular wear, which is gonna cause premature wear and noise. Right, so one of the things we're battling here, and it's really, really important on EVs, is the brakes are gonna last a long time, but you do have to make sure. Now, I do a lot of in-town driving. I actually brake quite a bit you have to make sure that these are sliding because the heat is really your enemy, especially on an EV. They're gonna wear slower than a gasoline car, but if they don't get the lubrication, they can stick on. If they stick on, you have heat. If heat becomes an issue, it's not just the pads that'll become an issue. The rotors themselves may need to be serviced. Is that correct? Absolutely. Cool. All right, now we mentioned that we do a tire rotation, but of course I'm doing my winter tire swap. So a couple things I wanna point out. You'll notice that we have the right rear tire that came off. Now I happen to have the same size rims we'll, or the same identical rims. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, we rewrote right front on this tire. Now that was visible enough uh, for us to see with the naked eye, but we just rewrote it for the video. You wanna make sure that you're labeling your tires when they come off. And the way we label it is the tire is, the right rear tire was on the right rear of the car. So the technician's gonna know in the spring where that tire came from, not where it's going, but where it came from. One quick thing about uh, winter tire sizing, like I said, I happen to have the same rims identically. You do have to keep the same size. You cannot downsize on an EV. The brakes are fairly large. And uh, although I think we test fit, we could fit a smaller size on the rear, we couldn't fit one on the front or one of the other ways around. Long story short, you're gonna have to go with the same size tire for the winter. 
A lot of people ask me about range degradation. I happen to be using uh, Gislebed tires. There is some range loss in the winter with these tires, but one of the big things you're going to notice is if you give this car just a little bit of extra grip, in other words, enough grip in the poor weather, you're going to see a whole bunch of difference. You've got vehicle stability control. You've got an electric motor that can react instantly with very little momentum. Uh, your traction control works very good and your ABS on all four wheels, there's sensors on all four wheels. Uh, all of those things are going to keep this vehicle in line, but they require traction to do that. The eco tires, the all season eco tires, they're perfectly fine for all season or for three seasons of the year. Uh, but when you start getting into the winter weather, especially anything that's a little bit slippery, you're going to see a huge benefit by switching to uh, winter tires. So I strongly recommend winter tires, even though you're going to get a range loss, it's very important. So we're going to throw those on and we'll finish up the service. All right, one of the final things Chris is doing now is he's torquing the wheels. This is extremely important. We wanna make sure they're torqued correctly. Uh, if you have any concerns, you can always swing back in. I'm gonna have uh, Chris tech check them tomorrow or the next day as well, because of course I'm here every day. Couple things we didn't mention today. He's also checking the tire pressures. Just because you have tire pressure monitors, we wanna make sure you check the tire pressures, or we of course will check the tire pressures correctly here. Tire pressure monitors don't work until the vehicle's moving, and at that point the uh, wheels may warm up a little bit. So Chris is making sure that the cold tire pressure is correct. And again, torquing the wheels. Now, a couple services we didn't mention. Uh, you can balance the winter tires if you like, or balance the tires when you do that. We often uh, offer that to our customers. And of course, we could have done that. I decided to not do that today. Uh, these, are, these tires are fairly new. They've only had one uh, winter on them. So I've decided to decline that for now. The other thing we do that is a really good value to customers is we didn't put it in this video. We're gonna do it in another video. The alignment rack we have here, we can put the car on this system and it laser measures to make sure that the wheels are all perfectly in line. They're not tilted one way or the other. Uh, they're not leaning in and out. They're not facing the wrong ways. It's something you can't see with your eye, but we can measure to the 10th of a degree, actually to the 100th of a degree, I believe you can measure. And that allows you to make sure that your tires are not wearing prematurely. What we used to do in the past is look for tire wear and your tire would already be worn out before we would notice something out of alignment. Now what we can do is we can find out if your alignment's out before you have tire wear, and of course that saves your tire wear. And at Brantford Kia, we offer a no charge alignment check with any service. So if you're doing a service, uh, you can ask for that alignment check for you. You get a printout, and like I said, we'll do that in another video. Those are two things we didn't offer. So the last thing Chris is gonna do is he's gonna take it for a road test now. He's gonna make sure everything's uh, the way he thinks it needs to be, the way he feels it needs to be, make sure everything's correct. And then he's gonna hand the keys back to the service advisor. At that point, they will hand it to me. We'll settle up and off we go. And that is your EV service.